<laughs> Golly. Okay, so here we go. There is a like a formal definition of spelling. Conventional spelling, that means dictionary spelling, correct spelling. And we're talking about conventional spelling that requires students to remember and reproduce exact letter patterns and sounds. There is a way to do um, those sequences. There is a way, okay? Um, the second bullet up here, it involves a few things. Letter sound knowledge, like T says T, turtle, but it also involves phonological awareness. You've learned about that in literacy. So everybody point to the part of your body that you use for phonological awareness, ready? Phonological awareness, say it three times. Phonological, phonological awareness, awareness, phonological, phonological awareness, awareness, phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is hearing, hearing the sounds, not the written word, but hearing. So if I say cat, can you hear cat? Can you hear those three sounds in cat? Phonological awareness also is developed when kids <coughs> learn like rhymes and rhythms of language. So in kindergarten, when you learn nursery rhymes or poems or songs, that is all helping to develop phonological awareness. If I said to all of you, hickory dickory duck, the mouse dried up the clock, that, that is part of phonological awareness. If you said, the mouse ran up the tree, <laughs> then I would be a little bit concerned. Like we need to practice a little more or you don't have, you're not hearing that, okay? So that is phonological awareness. Um, morphological awareness has to do with the meaning of words. So the meaning of words actually has something in relation to the spelling of words. Um, I was teaching second grade and I had 31 second graders. And my principal had told all of our team, I'm gonna hire a technician for you. Somebody to come in an hour a day to help you out. And I was like, okay, when are we getting our technician? When are we getting our technician? And I kept writing him a note. And on my note, I spelled the word technician like this. Now, mind you, I thought I was a good speller. And I spelled it like this. Right. He said, Carrie, when you can learn how to spell technician, then I'll get you your technician. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I would have known that technician comes from the word technical, then I would know that that is a C. Okay? So words are related in spelling and in meaning. And our language is kind of like our country. Our country, we've just invited people in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. And we're like a big tossed salad. Okay, what do you guys like in your salad? Just shout it out. Croutons. Cheese, Cheese. Cheese. croutons, Cheese. Bacon. Cheese. Bacon. Cheese. bacon, chicken, Cheese. tomatoes, spinach. Lettuce. That's a good part. Lettuce. What did she say? Lettuce. Oh, lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Avocados. Hey, whatever you like in your salad. And we love our salad because it's all fresh and variety. It's kind of like our country. Now, what if I put it in a blender? Gross, right? <laughs> so with our language, we've, we've said, bring your language with you. Come to our country and bring your language. And that's why American spelling is super hard. Because we have so many influences. This is one book, The American Way of Spelling. And it talks a lot about how we have like welcomed all these different languages, which makes it difficult. But it makes it interesting as well. Um, so morphological awareness, the meaning of words. Uh, spelling conventions. Spelling conventions are rules, rules that work most of the time. I learned when I was probably in third grade, I before E, except after C, or when sounding like A is in neighbor and way. Did you guys learn that? Does that sound familiar? Um, it works most of the time. Okay, I before E, except after C. That is the convention that I would teach my students. Um, derivations. Derivations are words that are derived from one another. Okay, I'm going to teach you one right now. Um, say with me ten times. I want you to say sparrow grass. Okay, ten times sparrow grass. You ready? Sparrow grass. 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 Asparagus. What does that sound like? Asparagus. Asparagus. 
Asparagus is a derivation. It was derived from sparrow grass. So we have derivations of words. Um, isn't that interesting? <laughs> um, and then the last one, this says etymologies. Etymologies are the histories of words. Um, this, I love etymologies. I love studying histories of words. One day I was um, an intern coach and I was at my school, went by the office, hey, you're supposed to call your dad. So I thought, my, I thought somebody was dead. I mean, if he calls me at school, something's wrong, right? So I go call my dad, and my dad and I are total word nerds together. We love words. Like, to the point that I'll go over and he'll be like, should we read the dictionary? Let's read this page and see what words we don't know. And I'm like, yeah, that's too funny. <laughs> so we're kind of geeks. <laughs> but he called me and I said, hey dad, what's up? And he said, I had to call and tell you about a word. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mom's okay. Everybody's okay. So he tells me about, he starts telling me, you know how Vikings, um, I've been watching all these historical things about Vikings. Now, if you guys know anything about Vikings, Vikings were mean, like not nice. <laughs> and Viking tribes, they would get on their big ships and they would sail into Christian villages and lock everybody up in the church and burn down the churches and kill people. And if you died in battle, that was like the greatest honor. Okay, so Vikings were mean. And there was this one tribe of Vikings, and they were the meanest of all the tribes. And they were called the Berserk tribe. What does the word berserk mean? Crazy. Crazy. Okay, so that's where we get that word. Those are word etymologies. Super fun, really fun to um, have histories of words in your study of spelling. So spelling is not just memorizing. There are a lot of other things that play into spelling. And the last bullet just tells us that a systematic and explicit um, teaching of spelling is really effective. I told you guys, when I was little, I knew I was a good speller. I was a good speller. <laughs> My little brother, who has the very same mom and dad as me, he's a terrible speller. My mom always says, it's because you had a good teacher. His second grade teacher got fired after the, her year. And so she's like, Carrie, he never learned how to spell. And um, that, that has some truth. So if you don't think you're a good speller, you can learn, you can get better. And kids can get better at spelling as well. All right, I want you to go ahead and turn and teach each other about a few things that you learned right there about the definition of spelling. Teach. Okay. okay. I'm going to pause for a second.